Welcome to Geology Info. Today, you're going to learn everything about the earthquake that shook the remote Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia just a few hours ago. This is an isolated region, but one full of powerful geological secrets. Stay with us until the end to understand the risks, the challenges, and what the future may hold for this wild and explosive part of the Earth. The Kamchatka Peninsula, located in the far eastern part of Russia, is one of the most geologically active places in the world. Positioned along the Pacific Ring of Fire, this mountainous and remote region is in constant motion. It's where tectonic plates collide and reshape the Earth's crust, frequently generating earthquakes and eruptions. With more than 300 identified volcanoes, about 30 of which are active, Kamchatka is considered one of the most explosive zones on the planet. Among the most well-known are Klyuchevskoy, the tallest and most active volcano in Eurasia, and Shivaluk, responsible for historic eruptions over recent centuries. Each mountain there seems to tell a story of fire. In addition to volcanic threats, seismic activity is intense. Moderate to strong earthquakes are recorded monthly. The most devastating in recent history happened in 2006, with a magnitude of 7.6, triggering landslides and damage in coastal villages. Since then, monitoring efforts in the region have intensified, but many challenges remain. The collision of the Pacific Plate and the Okhotsk Plate creates a powerful subduction zone meaning one plate dives beneath the other, storing energy that eventually releases as earthquakes. This mechanism explains why the region is so unstable. Kamchatka also hosts vast geothermal fields, hot springs, and geysers, visible signs of the energy below the surface. This geological activity draws scientists from around the world, though the region is dangerously active and difficult to access. With untamed nature, low population density, and wild beauty, Kamchatka serves both as a natural science laboratory and a living reminder of the raw power Earth holds beneath our feet. On the morning of July the 20th, 2025, an earthquake with a magnitude of 6.9 struck the central region of Kamchatka, according to preliminary data from the USGS and the Geophysical Institute of Russia. The epicenter was located about 56 miles, 90 kilometers, west of Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky, the regional capital, at an estimated depth of about 16 miles, 25 kilometers. The tremor occurred at 3.42 a.m. local time, catching residents off guard in the early hours. Reports indicate that buildings shook for approximately 30 seconds, causing panic in both urban and rural areas. Despite the high magnitude, no loss of life was reported, although landslides affected roads and there were minor structural damages in nearby villages. Footage shared by residents shows fallen shelves, cracked walls, and household items tossed to the floor. The seismic alert system was triggered immediately, and local authorities preemptively evacuated high-risk areas, especially those near unstable slopes. Perhaps most concerning was the sudden rise in land elevation along parts of the coast, a phenomenon known as tectonic uplift, indicating that accumulated energy had not yet been fully released. This raises concerns about potential aftershocks, or even secondary volcanic eruptions. Since the main quake, more than 20 aftershocks have been recorded, with three surpassing magnitude 5, keeping the region on high alert. The tsunami threat was evaluated, but dismissed hours later since the epicenter was inland. Scientists are still analyzing the tectonic rupture involved, and there's concern that the event may have triggered activity in nearby volcanoes, such as Mutnovsky and Avachinsky both of which showed slight increases in gas emissions following the quake. Monitoring a region like Kamchatka is an enormous challenge. Stretching more than 750 miles, about 1,200 kilometers, from north to south, and covered in snow for much of the year, it's a landscape that makes sensor installation and maintenance extremely difficult. The existing seismic stations are sparsely distributed, and in many cases, rely on solar power and satellite transmissions. The isolation and harsh climate constantly affect the performance of this equipment, often requiring frequent maintenance, something not always possible due to the terrain's remoteness and danger. Researchers at the Kamchatka Volcanology Institute work closely with international centers like the Smithsonian Institution and the USGS, exchanging real-time data on earthquakes and volcanic activity. Satellites are also used to detect thermal anomalies, ground deformation, and gas emissions. However, even with modern technology, predicting earthquakes remains impossible. What scientists can do is identify high-risk areas based on past patterns, crustal changes, and chemical alterations in gases released by volcanoes. 
Recently, drones and ground robots have been deployed to collect data in hard-to-reach zones, but cost and logistics remain significant barriers. With seismic events becoming more frequent and intense, pressure is growing on monitoring agencies. Kamchatka remains a wild and fascinating geological frontier, where science moves forward by overcoming extreme obstacles in the quest to understand and predict the Earth's fury. Despite its geological reputation, Kamchatka is home to around 300,000 people, most of whom live in small towns and coastal cities. Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky, with about 150,000 residents, is the main urban center and was among the hardest hit by today's quake. Life there is far from easy. Residents live under constant threat of earthquakes, snowstorms, and eruptions. Buildings, though reinforced, are not always able to withstand the most powerful tremors. In addition, the psychological toll of repeated quakes keeps the population in a near-permanent state of alert. Critical infrastructure, hospitals, schools, and water systems are especially vulnerable. In remote areas, humanitarian aid may take days to arrive and landslides caused by tremors frequently isolate entire communities. Another serious issue is emergency preparedness. Despite public awareness campaigns, many people still don't know how to react properly during a crisis. Radio alerts and mobile apps are vital, but not all villages have access to such communication tools. Today's quake reignited discussions around the need for greater investment in civil preparedness and rapid evacuation protocols. Families are assembling emergency kits and running school drills, but it's still not enough given the magnitude of the risks. Living in Kamchatka means living with unpredictability, but for many it is also a matter of pride. The people have a relationship with the land built on respect and resilience, forged through generations who endured nature's fury and stood firm. Kamchatka has a history shaped by extreme events. The Shivaluch eruption in 1964, for example, sent ash plumes soaring more than 49,000 feet, over 15,000 meters, into the atmosphere, blanketing entire villages. The 1952 earthquake, with a magnitude of 9.0, caused a devastating tsunami that reached as far as Hawaii. These events remain vivid in both scientific records and public memory. Each new quake revives memories of those disasters and reinforces the need to stay vigilant. What geology shows is that Kamchatka will remain active, and perhaps increasingly so. Subduction cycles and volcanic patterns suggest that risk levels will not decrease in the coming decades. Looking ahead, experts are advocating for the creation of an international geologic response center on the peninsula combining science, logistics, and real-time tech to respond more efficiently to growing threats. There is also ongoing discussion around using artificial intelligence to better predict seismic and volcanic patterns. In the meantime, every resident, every scientist, and every local authority continues doing their part. Kamchatka is a living reminder that Earth is always changing, and it's up to us to understand and respect that transformation. If you found this content useful and informative, like this video, Subscribe to Geology Info and share it with others who are passionate about geoscience and extreme phenomena. Your engagement helps keep this community informed and thriving.